the first utterance of the term New World Order was at Bash at the Beach in Hogan's promo as he was being pelted with garbage from the fans in Daytona. Um, how intensively laid out is not the match, but what the NWO is and what it's to become. Is this like the, the chocolate falls in the peanut butter and we go, oh yeah, we, we got some miles here. Or is like the term New World Order given to Terry? Yeah, when they, they, they uh, in the Hulk movies where they show his blood when it, he starts to turn into the Hulk, and they'll show like for a split second like a microscopic, uh, as the oh yeah yeah as and he it's... evolves into the Hulk, you know, right? Like this is what's going on by you know biologically right now. Um, I think that the NWO was that. I think that you know that we had like eight or nine weeks, whatever it was, that Scott and I were showing up, and then we made uh, at Bash at the Beach. We made the the match what, with the three on three, <clears throat> and then from there it was like you know we had like a, a, a couple of weeks where we teased you know who was the third man, which was it was huge, mm-hmm. you know. And of course, you know anybody but Hulk wouldn't have wouldn't have been as special. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was the perfect guy for the perfect. It was really when you look at the, I, I've said it a million times, but the fact that Scott and I both ended our uh, contracts with the WWE on the sixth and the twelfth of June. Mm-hmm. No, maybe maybe his was the. Second, I was the sixth. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because my son was born like right as, like that, like when we first jumped over, my son was born like right, right away. Okay. So. Do you know, do you know that this is going to become a brand? There's no way anyone could have seen that. No. No. I mean, a faction, a, a wrestling angle. We didn't even have, we didn't have merch. You know, like we, they, like we had to get a logo just to have something to put on TV. It was, and then, you know, like a guy like Neil Pruitt that, who had, you know, I mean, he gets credit for shit, but he, you know, he came up with a lot of, uh, a lot of the stylistic, uh, like what you saw visually. See, he was you the know. director. Wasn't he the director of the Nitro episodes? He was... Steve Pruitt or, or Neil no, Pruitt? No, it was Neil Pruitt. Neil Pruitt. Steve was the director, a, I guess. The, um, who was in charge of... T- uh, probably Mitchell. Was Mitchell Keith Mitchell in charge of TV there? I, okay, I know anyway. he was at TNA. I, don't, I, can't, I can't remember fucking shit. But um, so how long after? So so the merch comes when obviously when you see this is catching on, somebody says, "Hey, listen, we need to uh, we need to capitalize." This though becomes today. This is a brand. NWO hasn't been uttered in a ring since two thousand two. I mean, when did that all wrap up for good? You brought yeah. it to WWE. I mean, but then... we've came. I mean, we've had you know reunions and we've come back and we've you know we've 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 worn the logo yeah in a nostalgia sense but but as an involved yeah, storyline no, no but i'm telling you one thing if they're going to bring this uh <clears throat> latino world order back then i you know I, I, there's a couple of malcontents i see on that uh on that wwe roster mr ziggler huh yeah. Corbin, you like being over there at NXT? Yeah. Maybe we put on black and white t shirt and we have a little bit of fun. How about you there, Big Braun? I know you just got your neck fused, but, you know, you want a home? I think you look nice in a you know, big, burly guy in an NWO shirt. Throw him a t shirt, right? I'll put a fucking black, NWO 2.0. Put, a black, put a black suit on and. Or NW two quit, quit after oh, three yes. weeks of people going what what the fuck this 
I ain't got time. I ain't got time for this shit. <laughs> Lean into was, the mic. I was talking to Steve. Me, me and Austin had our our our, our monthly sit down and powwow. Yeah, and he was telling me a story. You know, because he was he's he, he was he's been uh, he runs those uh, side by sides, those quads, and. um yeah, he's like he's got some. I mean, I, I watch his videos and shit, man. He, he gets going out there. He's I know he's. Uh, I give a shout out to Kawasaki because I know they they sponsor him. But um, he did a uh, uh, like a, a race and had a sponsor, and Kawasaki they they they, they jacked up a, a Kawasaki and made made it uh, race ready for him. Mm-hmm. So they go out and it's a 55 mile track and they got to do it three times. And where, because most of Nevada is, is, uh, public fucking, it's just, it's, the, it's the state of Nevada. You know, it's like, that's who owns the fucking the, the majority of everything. And the roads that go through there, uh, where this trail is are just roads that farmers use and everything else. So, they have to basically have a person with a radar gun and everything else to slow people down and they put a stop sign there and you have to come to to a stop before you can go through that road so that you don't have anybody you know slamming into a, a, a f-150 or whatever mm-hmm. you know the some farmers driving so Steve's telling me, he says, you know, when you're driving that fast, and he said, there's fucking dirt and all kind of shit. He says, your, your, your co-drivers, you know, working the mirrors and everything else, he says, that's, and I, I, I just say there was a rookie that was driving in front of him. I won't, I won't say, I won't give any description. No because, descriptions. <laughs> no description. I'll just say there was a rookie. And, uh, she, I mean, uh, <laughs> So there's, they're kicking up all this smoke and the next, you know, Steve slams into the back of this buggy, like 50 miles an hour. Holy shit. Because they're 600 yards from the stop sign. And this person just decided they were just going to slam on their brakes and it was so dusty, you couldn't and it was see so that. dusty. But by the time, it's, it, but and Steve, by the time he hit her, was going so fast, he hit her again and knocked Steve over on his right hand side, and it tore the wheel and something else off on the right hand side. They had to flatbed it back. But the guy is trying that that the person that fucked up their driver is trying to say it was it was Steve's fault, and they walk back and it's like. The pieces of the of the wreck are, uh, you know, two football fields from where she was supposed to stop, and like, and he was just like, "Wow!" Yeah. So the next one he's going to do is going to be at night, and then we started talking about like, "Hey man, you know, it's, we're beat up like fucking blah 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 blah." And I'm thinking like. Yeah, we're beat up, and you're in a damn buggy getting slung around with a with a an ex broken neck, you knucklehead. Like, hey, easy, buddy. I don't I don't have a lot of I don't have a lot of buddies I've had for thirty years. Like, you're one of them. Hey, I need to I need you to hang in there. I need well, this is the premise. Bring- I mean, the whole show is 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 his uh, exploits. Like, well, not crashes, yeah. but going throughout the country and but and i don't think that he'll mind me saying this he this was not you know what was what they pitched because it was like he couldn't believe they showed up for episode one and it was snowing like he thought this would be a spring thing it just it it just and everything they've done they've it's it's like everything it's it's everything and they've they you know there's He's, he just told me one story, and uh, I don't think he'll mind me saying this. Um, Steve got up at like 6 o'clock in the morning. It was, eight, it was actually before that because I think the local Krispy Kreme opened up at 6. So Steve thought, fuck it, man. I, you know, 
I'll get up and he bought like sixty dollars worth of donuts for the crew. You know, and there and, and Steve drove every mile of this that that, that whole show if you if you've watched it. Uh he drives this Winnebago, this big ass trailer. Mm-hmm. And um he says, you know, like the next thing you know, that they're they're Drive, the guy in an S, I think they're in an Escalade, it's some kind of SUV, are driving up next to Steve and the, the lady producer saying, unroll the window, he wants to hand you some some donuts. And Steve's like I am when it comes to, like, you don't fuck around in a car. You know, put your seatbelt on. For, like, this, is, this is adult time. This isn't fuck around time, you know, especially the damn Winnebago. And they're so they end up mooning Steve, and you know Steve's sixty or close to, and he's like, "Here I am. I'm supposed to be the rattlesnake, fucking stone cold Steve Austin, and I got these fucking jackasses doing the little fucking college prank." He said, "And what am I supposed to do? It, 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 my character supposed to sell that?" He says, "Let alone the fact that if I could got up on my own." Own damn, you know, trying to be nice, and they're wanting to fucking throw donuts all up and down the fucking road that he paid for. This you is know? the crew. This is yeah. the crew. And I was just like, but and I, I watched the show, and I just, I, I picked a couple, like some, some things, and he was just like, and then I could tell, like, Cab, just shut up. Like, Steve doesn't want to talk about this because he's. Yeah, already, this is not. This is yeah, not a good time. He's, he's already. Like, he's, I've already, like, Kevin. I've already had this discussion with my wife. <laughs> I don't need to have it with you. No, he was cool, man. We were like we, but he was he was very very unhappy with. Uh, and I watch it. I'd like it because there's. I mean, they, you catch some 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 Steve Williams in there. You catch they're like real Steve in there, and mm-hmm. I think that's kind of cool. So anybody that you know, but I think you know, you bring me in someplace and tell me I'm going to be fucking doing that uh, cocktails. That Liam, the, who, who was in that? Was it Liam Neeson? Was it? Was it Liam Neeson? Uh, no, t- you're thinking of uh, Tom Cruise. Yeah, who's the, who is the other guy? Brian Brown. Oh, no, yeah. I mean, he was a. He kind of looks like Liam yeah. Neeson, though, right? He, he's got that vibe. He's got yeah. the uh, love child of Liam Neeson and um, and Michael Caine uh, vibe. Yes, yes. And um, so the the person like you know do, does something where he throws it behind his back, spins it, and does all this shit. It's just like instead of like you would te- if if I was to teach somebody to do do something like that, I'd teach them to do one thing. Like this is how you spin a cup. <laughs> you know, we would build on that. But since they're so tight on time, like Steve's got to learn how to do what this guy's perfected in fifteen years. Steve needs to fucking get it down <laughs> pat in seven minutes. Exactly. And like you can just see Steve's like fuck this. So, yeah. Listen, um, as far as uh, the NWO goes in, in relation to Steve, also never a member, by the way, just bring that up. Um, would have been a good one. He would have been perfect. I mean, he, basically, he been- you know, what was going on over there was was a, a kind of the mirrored reflection of, of the NWO. And- well, I think, that, I think that the DX was more NWO. I think Steve was such a separate entity. Well, but the, the, well, yeah, you know, I mean, because I guess Steve was always popular, Steve Stone Cold was always the babyface. Yeah. NWO and that, became it, babyface by default because they got too cool to be heels. I mean, that happens, right? When the heel gets too popular, you could do any, you can have them do anything you want and they're going to, they're going to be over. But did you, know, and, and we also, those- we also, we also had that New York TV we were coming off of. Yeah, but yeah, Scott, sure. Scott and I, it, it didn't. There was such a different distinction back in those days. Like when you would be at WCW and somebody would go, "Man, you ever, you know, you ever think about going to New York?" You'd be like, "Oh man, I'm not fucking ready for New York. Like I'm fine for here. I'm fine for fucking WCW, but I ain't ready for New York." Hmm. That was always. And when when they said come in as a bodyguard. I thought, fuck, man! Like Shawn Michaels is like he's, his his rocket's been lit. 
no, the big guys aren't selling for them. They're going to bring me in and help fucking, you know, get these guys selling. And then it was like right off the, off the bat, he's working with, you know, he does a small little angle with Marty. Then he's out, he's, he's off with, with Scott Mm -hmm. and the three of us are driving. And and it's just like, again, perfect. That was, that was a perfect storm as was Hogan coming down. That ramp was a perfect storm. Correct. You know, Hogan yeah. was off TV shooting a movie. Scott and I, just, it came over fresh, and it looked like it was a takeover. It looked like it was the WWE. It had sent a, a force over to, to, to shut Turner's fucking boys up, and who more WWE than than Hulk would be the, would be the you know, on that A and E documentary that they did about the NWO, Hogan um, he iterated that he'd like toiled over this decision and turning his back on the red and yellow and all he'd done to build. But at that point, what choice did he have? The red and yellow and the it's still though. I mean, it's it's so hard. I, I can't. And I'm 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 saying this because I have a perception of what it would be like but it's like if 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 this logo on me right here if this logo was as over as it was and it said nash world order it would be very hard for me to it's i can't give this up you know this is i mean this is this is when somebody says your career this is the first thing I think of. Right. You know. So like the Hulkamania would have been. This was for, my um, this was my 73 home run season. Mhm. Even though I I I wasn't on the gas. The, Palm said. <laughs> I, I, was I, probably, I was on growth I was on growth hormone but not not test they wouldn't give me testosterone cuz my fucking natural test level was still too high. But boy I could fucking get get six IUs of growth in me every day. I understand what you're saying that that this was something that Terry built over you know years and years, and it was it was the structure that the built that the business was erected on um, in the 80s and 90s. I mean, of course, you know the business existed before, but that I mean, crossover I mean, like I, the, to me the thing that made pro wrestling appealing for me to 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 do as a uh, an occupation. And to pursue it at all was the fact that I had watched those Saturday Night Live main events and had watched, I mean, because that's, in in Detroit, we got New York TV. We didn't get Dusty and those guys. Mm. I had no idea who those people were. When did, I guess when Cable came up, you got TBS? I did, but I didn't watch it because I was, like I said, I was watching Hoops. So... Mm. Um, when I moved to uh, Atlanta and got the, because they said, you know, if you want to, if you want to become a pro wrestler, you got to go to Atlanta. That's basically what I was told. Like that would be the easiest route. And then once I got down to Atlanta, they said, well, maybe you want to go see Matt Sudo, who's the guy who broke in Hulk. Mm-hmm. And like the first time Hulk walked in in Matt Sudo's dojo, Matt Sudo broke Hulk's leg. Yes. You know, it's like legendary story. And it's, you know, of course, Hulk comes back and becomes what he becomes. And um, I, was, I saw a guy today at the gym that went down and went by Hogan, uh, Hogan's uh, beach hangout. Mm-hmm. And he said, you know, he said, hey, I met Hogan. I said, "Oh yeah." I said, "Where'd you meet? Where'd you meet Hulk at?" I said, "You go down. You down in the Clearwater area?" He said, "Yeah." I went to his 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 bar. He said, "What a nice guy." He said, "It's amazing." He says, "He's got great skin." He said, "You know, for like for his tan, is he's like like you know he's like he's got great skin. He's moisturizing, obviously. It's got to be loofah and, and moisturizing." My shins look like, a, you know, like this. I mean, if I, if I don't keep Gold Bond 10 on my shins, looks like I walk on them. It's like, fuck. 
His skin. Bischoff proved to be the perfect person to manage that NWO brand. Well, would you yes. have thought so at the time, though, before it got rolling and the proof was in the pudding? Would you thought that Eric would have been able? When he sold the idea that, about you know, it, it working in Japan, and so he came... He came to my house and he we, he stayed for like a day or two, and uh, the first night we just stuck, we hung around the house. I think my wife cooked, maybe we cooked steaks or something, and then the next night we, we there's a, a a gentleman's club called Bourbon Street Circus. I don't know if it's still in Phoenix, but that used to kind of be where the talent was, and so you know Eric, Eric and I went out there and had cocktails. And um, he pitched, you know, he pitched the idea to me. And he was very animated and very excited. He, you know, I'm listening to him going, yeah, I worked in Japan. You know, like, it just, he had way more vision and, and, and way more expectations than I did. So you really, so you were a tough sell at first. It wasn't a tough sell. I just thought, like, you know, you're bringing, like, you're so limited when you're bringing in two guys that were involved in the curtain call. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it's like everybody knows that Scott and I are boys. So, and we're coming in together. So you, you've got to package us. There's been ongoing skits back and forth between the two companies. You know, with a uh, mean scheme, mean scheme, and uh, you know, like Turner doing his, and then Vince, oh, the, the mockery, yeah, 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 the parodies back and forth. I mean, there was definitely tension there. And then all of a sudden, it's just here comes, you know, two of the top five guys in the WWE showing up at, at Turner's, and one, you know, one week Scott shows up, next week I show up, and. The rest of it's a fucking adjective. But he, um, so when Eric's pitching this to you, the uh, your reference to Japan, by the way, is the uh, the original invasion angle from like '96 or whatever it was the uh, New Japan and that the other federation was it? No, because we were '96. Uh, you were later though, no? Or maybe it was '95 then. We're, 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 whenever we're it happened June. in Japan, when uh, New Japan and that U UW Union of Wrestling, whatever it was called, yeah. They did that interpromotional invasion thing. And so cool concept. I mean, why the hell not, right? I mean, you guys are so closely associated with WWE. It only makes sense that you try to do that. And, and to have that 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 third I mean to have that third piece of Hulk. And he did when we when we pitched the finish, you know, like when we pitched the finish. And then Hulk would come down and drop the leg, blah, blah, blah. Um, it was like we, we had no idea if Hulk was going to jump on. But the ratings started going through the roof. And we started beating New York. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we started, started beating WWE. And at that point, it's just like, especially with his, you know, once we uncovered the... Uh, Ark of the Covenant <laughs> contract he had. <laughs> yeah, it was something. <laughs> you know, it was like, wow. Like, you know, to, to, to me, conceptually at the time, I'm thinking, he's a smart dude, man. He's going to jump on this. He's, he's, he's going to jump on this. He's, he's got to have a 50% merchandise deal. L little did I know. You had no idea. <laughs> he got everybody's merchandise money. You're paid to wear the damn shirt. You know um, what? And, and one thing that Scott would say, and I and I and I took it from him is, you know what, man? Everybody cuts their own fucking deal. You know, if you fucking if you sign off on something, that's your deal, and that's that's just it. Mm -hmm. Do um, when Hogan would do the doesn't work for me, brother. Right? We always hear about this. You guys all had creative input with Eric on what you guys were doing yeah. with NWO. Would you did 
do you kind of function, because I know you got on with Hulk well, and obviously you got on with Eric. Were you kind of a middleman between you and or Scott between Hogan and the no, office? No, because by, do- be, by the time it didn't work for Hulk, we were, there was already friction between us. Like that was some of the, the problem was, you know, because Hulk is, was always so used to, and I, I'll, I'll just use his, his direct quote, you know, his entire career, people like stood underneath the Hogan apple tree and waited for a golden apple to fall and they'd get a six month run with Hulk and they'd have the run of their life and they would, you know, move on. And he said, and and, and you two pricks come in and fucking come in with chainsaws and try to cut the fucking tree down. And he was, I can't say he's, he wasn't wrong in, in feeling that way, but it's just like, we had a vision and it, it was, we were 10 years younger than he was. Yeah. If not more. So, I mean, it's just, it wasn't like he was listening to West Coast rap. Yeah. I mean, we just had, we just had a vision that, you know, the, the more we could, because the last, it, it became pop culture ish, but it wasn't pop culture. I, I have on my phone, I've got to send it to you, but some guy sent it to me. And it's a letter from um, from the principal to the parents, and and this kid is one of them. But the, like, it's been brought to my attention that your son is a part of this gang at school. This is like a fifth grader. Oh, the NWO. The NWO, and that yeah. the, he's he can no longer wear the you know the colors, <laughs> and it goes on and on and on, and it's like three or four paragraphs that this guy and I'm just thinking like. And the NWO guys with their NWO shirts are roughing up the other guys at, at, out at the playground at recess. <laughs> and They're a successful just, gang. They're taking yeah, over. Exactly. Yeah. So I, mean, the- I, I just, I read, I just, when I'm reading this and I'm thinking like, I get what, not, like, I, I get now why sometimes a person will just come up to me and, and like, and, and like in Des Moines and like, Wow, man. Like, I never thought I'd meet you. Like, you have no idea when I was 14 how much shit, how much trouble I got in because of you guys. (laughs) And you say, you know, it wasn't our intention, but hope it was fun. Hope you had a good run. Did she do the job? Did you do the job for me? Did me? And when I met Bobby Heenan, I said that, I said, listen, I have a lot of teachers that would like to talk to you because I had your friggin' mouth when I was a kid. And he just, he goes, did you ever get thrown out? I said, no. He said, you weren't any good. That was Bobby. Yeah. Um, could the WWE run with NWO after the purchase of, of all the uh, Turner uh, rights and stuff? Could it ever have worked? Or was this just, was this just if they doomed wanted to it be to. put to bed? If they wanted it to. It was working. We were the number one selling T-shirt in two weeks. It was working. So why didn't it go beyond two thousand two or whatever? Because it get once once Scott was gone and Hulk went back. It's like what worked was we came back and we were the original three, right? And then once uh, Hulk broke off. Then Pa came right back with us, and we were the Wolf Pack, mm. which was what we were on the road the entire time that we were together, the three of us. Right. Like, you saw that that's, that's was, was if you went to a house show, show, you saw the Outsiders and Pac. And it was free bird rules, so even if Kid worked earlier on the show as the Cruiser Champ, he'd still come out with us. And it would end up being the three of us versus whoever two guys were in the ring. Right. You know, we would just you know, we would just make it free bird rules. So um The merch still going strong today? The I, merch sells. They're I making dolls you, all I, the time. I, they keep I, making I told you fucking we had this conversation. They have screwed us on our merch the last quarter. 
We did, but, I didn't get I didn't get a dollar on NWO. And but I think that whole, was just a it was a switch in the vendor. I think is what the the it issue better was. It's be. gonna it it's better gonna straighten be. out in your next check. I would assume. Well, I would, July first is the next quarterly, and if it, if it's it just it's awfully funny how several very large stars that I'm in association with that aren't afraid to discuss such things as just not <laughs> dollars and cents, but hey, have you noticed that the merchandise is basically the royalties has basically been cut in half and it's not just one person, it's all three of us? Which would lead one to believe that that it was the accounting getting on the books for the new company. I would, that's what... You'll get a double kinda, payment. Well, uh, like a 150%, uh, right? You'll you'll have uh, the well, we should, half I that should, you lost and then... I should get, yeah, I mean... They'll make up for the for the period that was should that be, was cut it should lower. Be, it should yeah. one yeah one it should be one it should be one hundred and fifty percent right of what I normally get exactly so but if it's, but it's, if it's well, not then then I then I guess uh, who's who's the guy that bought this company uh oh oh you mean w, fanatics or 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 no w, 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 fanatics w, is the merch what's, now. what's the guy's name that bought WWE. Uh, Endeavor is the is the is the company. Yeah, what's the guy's name? Ari, right? Yeah, Ari. 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 Yeah, so I guess I'll be having a powwow, a of, putting a piece of paper in Ari's hand. Well, but point being, the stuff still sells. The brand was still strong. It yeah, it still sells. It I saw. I saw. Business. I saw a shitload of brand new uh, WWE logoed NWO shirts in Des Moines. As a matter of fact. You can you can tell when they're new because they look just like the one I got on. Mm-hmm. So, but the, and yeah. then, but there's new dolls. And I ask NWO it, dolls all the time. The Funkos, right? Didn't you have a new Funko? Was that an NWO? I, I Funko got one. Or? No, that's going to be a Big Daddy Cool, is what I heard. Oh, okay. That was one of the. That's one of the things they told me to squell my anger when I called about the last royalty check. <laughs> this, oh, you're going to get hey, a Big listen, Daddy Cool Funko. And you're on all the games, and you got this, 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 and this. It's like, I don't give a fuck. I don't care if, I've, if, if I'm getting 7% of the Heinz ketchup packages that you sell to the ballparks. I want the fucking royalties on what you're selling to fucking Walgreens and Walmarts and everywhere else in the, in the big, you know, 16-ounce Heinz, uh, Heinz bottle. I want the, I want the, the, the bucks. I don't want... I don't, you give me all the Funkos you want. I don't. I don't get seventeen percent of the Funkos. Just so. spitballing, but uh, you know, you're you're mentioning uh, this this drop off has come it coincides with the purchase of the company or the yeah no I mean co- the coincides the with company into... the uh, with with the setup for sale. And now that it's sold, but the the merger isn't complete yet. Well, maybe maybe you won't get your fifty percent until. Well, as I'm saying, so it's just court. like if it's if it is fanatics and they've made the fucking uh, the the they've made the the issue, and they didn't have time to. I, I don't know what you would. I mean, it's not like they're not the largest fucking. Uh, company that, that, uh, yeah, that does licensor, this. yeah, right. I'm, geez, I, I'm I'm really counting on that to be the fucking case that they fucked up. You know, it's just like, and I guess, I guess people are just fucking dumb. Like, like people say shit to you, and you're just like going, "What?" Like, well, I hope it'll get squared away. Yeah, but who fucking signed off on this? You know, because I'm looking at it, and it, it took me six seconds to take my royalties out and look, and there wasn't an NWO item on it for me to go, this is fucked up. That's clearly an error then, Kevin, and it, it will be rectified. Well, how is it an error with several other people that aren't involved in the NWO? 
it's just a 50% cut across the fucking bow. Hmm. I see what you're saying. You didn't even have a line item on the statement for NWA. Not a line say. item. Not one in the, not that they okay. were, the sales were down. It's just that there so were. So how could, so how could like Steve's or maybe whoever exactly. we're talking about. Say, 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 that's just, that's just for the, say the sake Austin, of argument, yeah. say Steve Austin. So what? He didn't sell a Stone Cold t-shirt? Hmm. Because everything I got was all, it was nothing where I was, I had a, 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 a hunk of the pie. It was all shit that I was with other people, you know, or, or it, was, it was a Mattel doll where your percentage might be 5% or something like that. But nothing that was, you know, that's your bread and butter, that's, that's 85% of your, you know, Sometimes eighty five percent of your check is 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 around this logo, mm -hmm. so, and it's real simple. I mean, I'm sure if you you go after them and sue them, they'll just, you know, stop stop selling because I know it. If 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 I'm getting seventeen percent, and they're getting the other, that they're they're doing pretty well on this this logo to, for for profit. And that's before their their creative uh, their creative uh, financing that SAG and everybody else has. That uh, yeah, well, there's t there's tons of skews there, so that 